so I had to get mixed mix matching Red Bull, 20 ounce and a 16 ounce. Lame. Woke up this morning and it's nice, super nice outside. The sun's out and everything. So I got my bag all together, made sure my last battery was charged, and was like, I gotta, I gotta go fly. I have to fly today. Here's a, so I'm, I'm trying to find a decent place to fly because I think all the parks are shut down. Yep, this is where I'm flying. This is where I'm flying. So the first thing I'm gonna do is a little test flight because I just put the new VTX on there and didn't get to fly yesterday. When I was putting it on, I did kind of jingle a few things around. So I want to make sure that everything's still well connected. So I don't want to, you want to throw it up into the sky and have a loose point. Plus I stuck the VTX right on top of the flight controller. Some I wouldn't normally do. Right this way.
wind is just pushing the drone everywhere. And I got the eyes set way up. It's ridiculous. So that's what I've been afraid of. You can see inside there, there's hot glue uh, right there on that connector. And that's because that connector, when I was taking it off, it snapped off. And like the whole top of the connector came off exposing the pins. But I could still put the plug in and it's actually easier to match up the pins to make sure that they're all plugged in and to put the top on then I super glued the whole thing. So I've been afraid that it's gonna come loose, jiggle loose or something, and one of the motors won't work. So that's what I was thinking happened. But I don't think it did because it ran out of battery, did this whole thing and flipped. And then I went over there and I, I hit the arm button again and only three motors spun. The one motor that typically went out when that occurred was the one that wasn't spinning. So it could have been a combination of the two. I still pushed it back in. Um, probably put some more hot glue on it. But we got some flying in today. So you probably noticed that I did a ton well you're not going to notice because this whole thing is going to be chopped up and it's going to be because I'm going to get out and fly again if it stays nice I'm going straight home right now and I'm recharging but what I'm mainly doing right now when it comes to flying is I'm practicing my flips huge reason why I can do an S roll or an S turn or whatever you call them easily all day long I can do S turns but I've been practicing my backflip because there's a way to get your, you got to do a backflip and point your camera straight up at the ground, put your drone into a slant with your camera down at the ground since your camera's tilted. And so I'm trying to get to flip into that position every time easily because you do that and you can do, you know, a Rubik's cubes and all that different stuff really easy out of it. And so it's all about getting a feel for your drone. Even if I was an experienced pilot flying forever and could do all these tricks on one drone and I got a brand new drone, I would still be flying that drone trying to get the feel for when it snaps into that roll, when it snaps into that back flip. So I got to get the front and the back and a feel for it. I'm trying to get a quick so I know how to blip it to get it perfectly and also how to go slowly to where you can slow it down and make it look like it. You gotta go out and have practice and practice and practice and really get a feel for your drone. And once you get a feel for your drone and where your camera's pointing and you can flip into those positions and you know exactly how to hit that trigger to get it there, then you can snap into any, any trick you want. You can start doing them lower to the ground. So if you notice all of my flips and stuff are way up high, I'm going up high giving it a lot of throttle and then I'm trying to blip it so I'm trying to judge how much of a distance that blip does from when the trick is started so you blip the throttle and then drop it and then you do the trick and then you bring the throttle back up and so you try to time how far the drone falls in that period of time when you blip it not only on the fast snappy backflip but also the slower backflip, how much time is lost and how much the drone falls. Finally, piece number two, episode three, but there's still, look at all these little almost fails in it. Man, I don't like that. Damn. Let's try one more. Well, we got to print that, that industrial thing, so... The uh, little piece that I designed. And I'm wondering if it's the plastic too. So I'm going to do this in black. Because I don't have any of this problem at all. I don't understand what's happening. Those are all weak points. It's where like a clog or something happened. And then only a little bit of the uh, plastic went around. And up here, that's a bunch. I mean, that can all be strengthened. 
But I don't know what's going on because there's no clogs. Bad print. God, that's so many. When I first looked at this yesterday, it didn't seem like that much. I would have probably stopped this had I seen it. I wanted to show you guys this. Check this out. I've never seen this before. Ever. Because I've never had a reason. That's a hundred percent infill. Solid. It's gonna be one solid piece of plastic. Think about printing two or three of these just to really put them through the strain test, see how strong they actually are. Let me know anybody out there in the comments, let me know if you guys have done a hundred percent infill on anything. I mean I've done up to 75% infill on things, like those hinges, I've done 50 and 75% because they do need to be strong. But I've never done a hundred percent, so crazy. It's time to go to the park and get some practice in. I got more batteries coming at some point today. I've only got two for now, so you can't get much practice in with just two batteries. You need more. Basically, right now what I'm doing is Still trying to get that flip backwards and aim down. Once I really get the feel for that, then I'm gonna flip backwards in a Rubik's cube. So I'm gonna yaw and then flip back over. And that's my plan. Other thing that I'm doing too, so I'm trying to get the feel for how inertia takes over. So I'm sending it above the tree, and while the tree's still in view, I'm trying to flip it and S roll out back underneath it. So I'm really trying to, those are the two things that I'm gonna be doing over and over again just and it's good to get out and practice and just do the same thing over and over it really gets a feel for the quad and then once you get those settled you really get those down so I'm not worried about any other lines just those two once you really get those settled and down then you have that feel for your quad and any other trick will just come natural the next one that I'm doing after this is a power loop because I've done four power loops and I haven't got it to sling back the way that I want it to sling back. The Martian 2 that I used to have, man, it took no no effort. I mean, just inertia took over and just the way that it was shaped, it slung it back. This one is, acts more like the QAVR that I had and it took a lot of control to get it to sling it backwards. The QAVR, I would go to do a power loop and then all of a sudden I'd get finished out of the power loop and I'd be further ahead than I was behind. So it, would, it wouldn't sling it back, I had to really learn how to do that and this one kind of acts the same way 